hey what's up guys what's going on welcome to our gh tech tv and today i'm going to give you my full review for redmi 3s prime and uh, it's been almost over a month i'm using this device so i have uh, a lot of things which i want to mention in this video so i've uh, written down the points and i have divided them into pros and cons of things which i liked and things which i didn't like and i'm going to go over them one by one so make sure to watch this video till then so that you don't miss on any important points now before i start my review i just want to mention that uh, if you want to purchase this device please use our links which are in the description box below and in the comment section that will surely help our startup youtube channel and uh, one more thing guys uh, we have recently crossed 10,000 subscribers so thank you very much it definitely couldn't have been possible without support of you guys so keep your support going on and uh, that will keep us motivated to make more videos of this kind all right guys now the first thing which i liked about this device is the battery life so this comes with the 4100 milliamp battery and uh, it can give you screen on times ranging from 7 hours to 9 hours and in some cases i even got 9 plus hours so i believe this is one of the best battery lives which i've tested till date across the devices uh, simply to say the battery life is just excellent on this device guys and uh, so which can give you a battery backup of 1.5 to 2 days easily and uh, next thing which i liked is the display quality no four things to mention here guys first thing is the weaving angles it has excellent weaving angles color reproduction is very good outdoor visibility is also very good and uh, that little bit of added contrast and saturation makes the content look much more better and uh, i just forgot to mention uh, uh, about uh, one thing with the battery that is this charging speed so, so this is the stock charger so this is this has an output of 5 volts at 2 amps so this could charge this 4100 milliamp battery uh, in, ara in and around 3 hours so one testing took me over 3 hours little over 3 hours and the other testing took me 2 hour 40 minutes now to exactly break down the 2 hour 40 minutes i could charge this device 27 percent in 30 minutes 47 percent in 60 minutes 90 percent in 2 hours and 100 percent in 2 hour 40 minutes all right guys now getting back to the display now this has two pros and one con now the con here is the max resolution uh, which you can watch on YouTube, uh, YouTube application is only 720p because the display's resolution is itself 720p. Hence the videos which you can watch on YouTube are just limited to 720p. Now the two pros it has is it extends the battery life and uh, it also helps in gaming. So uh, yeah, it does perform pretty well with gaming. Uh, I tried Asphalt 8 Modern Combat 5 Nova 3. It played all the games perfectly fine. No issues with that. And I tweeted to uh, Geeky Renji saying that uh, it's interesting to see that this device is performing so well with gaming. And he replied saying that uh, uh, the reason for that is uh, the 720p display. Uh, the stress on uh, Adreno 505, that is the GPU, uh, will be pretty less because it needs to push uh, very less pixels uh, compared to 1080p. And I totally agree with that point. Uh, by Geeky Ranjit and um, henceforth the display can act as pro and can act as con. Now uh, not only gaming experience guys, uh, heat management is also pretty good on this device. Yes it does get a little bit warm while charging and also while playing games but no major heating issues uh, as far as I have noticed. Uh, and the next thing which is good about this device is the RAM management as well. So sometimes it can load around 8 to 9 applications with no issues and uh, sometimes it can uh, hold up to four to five applications so if you're a person who posts on facebook uh, messaging at the same time handling a call and also have loaded a small application of the uh, game small game in the background then i don't think so it should be an issue so it can handle those uh, tasks easily uh, with the abilities with the multitasking abilities it has and uh, the next thing which i liked about this device uh, is the fingerprint sensor uh, it's pretty fast guys i'll just uh, uh, let you know about that as you can see it takes uh, less than a second so feels pretty fast and uh, other things which you can implement uh, using this fingerprint scanner is one is you can lock and unlock the device next you can authenticate uh, uh, for the application lock so you can lock the applications or the games using uh, the fingerprint sensor and uh, you can also there is a child mode so you can authenticate that child mode as well uh, with this uh, fingerprint sensor all right guys, now let's speak about the storage. So this comes with the 32 gigs of inbuilt storage and uh, you can also add a micro SD card. So it has this hybrid SIM slot. Henceforth, uh, if it, it does have an option of adding a micro SD card. And uh, 
USB OTG is also supported hence you can connect pen drives using such cables or you can also you know get those uh, USB OTG pen drives itself uh, all work perfectly fine with this device so I don't have any issues regarding the storage as well now the next thing which I liked about this device is it has all the necessary sensors so from the light sensor to proximity accelerometer e-compass uh, gyroscope it has all the necessary sensors it also has this IR blaster through which you can control TVs ACs uh, and the setup boxes so to give you a real usage scenario guys I have a Philips TV a Onira TV a Reliance big TV that is a setup box and also a local vendor setup box so those three standard uh, uh, TVs and setup boxes worked but the local vendors setup box did not work with the inbuilt remote application and also with the peel uh, remote application which uh, you you can install uh, from the Play Store it's a pretty good application but somehow uh, it did not work with that local vendors uh, setup box uh, but the good thing about Lee 2 was we could configure uh, that remote application with any other remote henceforth uh, Lee 2's remote application worked perfectly fine with all those uh, TVs and setup boxes but this uh, did not do well uh, in terms of local setup box that is one thing to note down and one thing to mention all right so uh, next thing which i liked about this device is the call quality guys i can rate it at around 8 out of 10 pretty good call quality i have the secondary mic for noise cancellation hence it does pretty good in terms of call quality as well and uh, i don't know if uh, many people concentrate on this thing but even haptic feedback is pretty good on this one or the vibration you get when you touch the capacitive touch buttons or the fingerprint sensor you feel a little bit of bass effect hence it uh, makes this device feel much more premium so i like the haptic feedback as well on this one but that was not the case on the lee 2 as i'd mentioned in my thoughts after five days video the same things holds true after one month as well and regarding software features the features which i personally use and liked are like reading mode single-handed mode uh, theme store and uh, you also have the security application through which you can control permissions uh, uh, data management and you can do much more things so i use these uh, features and you know that miui is pretty uh, heavy skin henceforth has many features uh, inbuilt into it but it also has a con guys uh, as i said the gaming experience is pretty good on this device at the same time uh, the general usage experience or the ui experience is not that smooth you will notice occasional stutters lags and also the camera application uh, lags sometime so that is one thing to mention and uh, one more thing guys I if you remember rightly uh, in my after five days thoughts video I told that uh, uh, the app lock is not being implemented uh, correctly on this device but uh, you do have an option I told that uh, I need uh, the authentication to be asked every time I close the application you can uh, find that under settings as you can see you can go to this and then let me authenticate this one so select the applications which uh, you want to open or authenticate through fingerprint sensor so let's select this peel remote application as you can see so you can find a settings uh, button over here and through this you have this uh, setting here lock settings so you can choose between uh, when do you want the authentication to be asked is it like after exiting the application or once the device is locked so you can use this and it works perfectly fine i don't have any issues regarding app lock all right guys now let's look at the cons with this device now the first thing which i did not like is the camera so it comes with 13 megapixel rear camera and 5 megapixel front facing camera now there are some things which i liked and some things which i didn't like about the camera the focusing is good and uh, daylight pictures come out to be decent enough but the things which i did not like is uh, the images looked washed out colors were not that accurate and low light just forget it guys it looked pretty grainy i did not like the low light photography on redmi 3s prime now speaking of the front facing camera uh, it overexposes the shot and hence loses the details even the front facing camera is not good in low light as well all right guys now let's speak about the design and build quality i actually did not like the build quality and i'll let you know why now it's a good thing that they have provided metal at this price point but the issue is it feels hollow and it's pretty slippery guys you know you you have this rounded edges and metal being used it feels pretty slippery and it has like fallen around two to three times and you can also see that there is a, a small dent on this chin and uh, not only that guys you also have this paint coming off as you can see 
as you can notice this so this is my real usage experience uh, it's probably like I've used it for a month or so and you can see that the paints already coming off this plastic and also uh, the paints coming off this metal as well if my camera is able to focus as you can see so uh, it looks good uh, but uh, it does not you know feel good it feels hollow and the build quality is not that good and one more thing to mention guys when this device fell like as you can see if my camera is able to capture I do have uh, you know a small crack in the camera lens as you can see so I believe uh, uh, the build quality is not up to the mark guys and uh, the next thing which I did not like is the speaker placement and also speaker quality it's uh, on this uh, bottom plastic as you can see it houses this speaker the placement is pretty bad if you keep it on table or on some surface it definitely muffles up the sound and also the quality is not that good and uh, one more thing is the output through headphone jack is also not that good and now as I've already mentioned IA Blaster works with only standard TVs and setup boxes and it does not work with local vendors and uh, one more thing guys uh, as i've already mentioned the display quality uh, has the, its limitation you can only watch up to 720p videos on youtube application and also you'll feel a little bit cramped while typing so as it's a five inch device you will notice that and uh, one more con you can say is it has this hybrid sim slot so i don't know like when the brands will understand if you're selling phones in india please provide two sim card slots and one micro sd card slot and the final thing about the cons is a lot of users, a lot of uh, my subscribers and viewers have complained about the network issues which they have faced. I didn't face any network issues uh, while handling the calls. So call quality was pretty good. But I have noticed one thing that is uh, most of the times it gets locked to 3G instead of 4G even if I have set the preferred network as 4G. And that's pretty evident uh, through the uh, speed test which I have also performed speeds were not that great all right guys now firstly let's evaluate this as a standalone device against the core features and later on let's see should we buy this device or do we have any competitors now how has it performed against the core features like display camera performance battery design and build and value for money so it has good display good performance great battery life and is value for money device but at the same time it does not have good camera and I was not happy with the design and build quality. So it checks four out of those six important boxes. So I believe it's one of the best devices at this price point. Now, I've been asked like 100 times, uh, which one should we buy? Is it a Redmi 3S or a Redmi 3S Prime? And my answer is pretty simple, guys. Go for a Redmi 3S Prime because if you pay 2,000 rupees extra, you're getting one gig of extra RAM, 16 gigs of extra storage, and a fingerprint sensor, which is a pretty good deal. So if if it's a question between Redmi 3S and Redmi 3S Prime, no questions asked. Go for a Redmi 3S Prime. Now people also ask me, should we go for a Redmi 3S Prime or Redmi Note 3, be it 16 GB or 32 GB? Uh, variants. So I would suggest you to go with Redmi Note 3 and I'm going to give you three important reasons why you should go for Redmi Note 3. It has a better processor that is Snapdragon 650. So for long term usage, I would suggest that one uh, over this uh, Snapdragon 430 processor and you're getting a full HD display uh, and a little bit better speakers. Henceforth, uh, media weaving experience will also be good on Redmi Note 3. And uh, thirdly, uh, cameras even though not that good on Redmi Note 3, but it's much better than uh, Redmi 3S Prime. So better processor, full HD display, and a little better camera. So for these reasons, I would suggest Redmi Note 3 over Redmi 3S Prime. But at the same time, if you want a compact device, which does perform well with gaming and normal usage, and which also has good display, then Redmi 3S Prime is still a better option. So that's it guys. If you feel this video is informative, give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family. And as I've already mentioned, if you want to purchase this device, the links are in the description box below. So please use our links that will surely help us start a YouTube channel. And uh, follow us on Twitter at RGH Tech TV. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And most importantly, thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon.